Hey, 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 family. It's your girl, Evelyn of the EvelynInc.com. And I am back with another video. And listen, my last video that I did, Curated versus Collected, seemed to really have resonated with you and several other people. And while it's not one of my most viewed videos, it definitely is the video that I've gotten the most feedback about. Um, more, higher engagement and so I kind of want to continue in that vein and I know I'm late in the game but happy new year okay and so um I wanted to talk to you about this idea of being a high maintenance woman so I was thinking about this recently and this is going to be another chatty Kathy video because I had notes but I don't know where they are and this is not like seven tips or five ways but this is just another very similar into that vein of curated versus collected this is very similar in in thought like I'm just going to chat with you old school YouTube talking head this is what we're going to do and so I was thinking about this the other day like about this notion of being a high maintenance person or a high maintenance woman. And I was like, I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with being high maintenance if you really understand what it means to be high maintenance. Now, I do think culturally, I do think um, in context of, of, of what people usually mean when they mean high maintenance, is that that's someone who's very demanding or um, entitled or feel like it is owed to them. But I was thinking about this more so in the context of self-care. And you guys know I've done a, a, a slew of videos about self-care and I talk about the difference between self-care and self-maintenance. And so when I think about this, right, um, I think about this notion of people are striving to be low maintenance and I, I don't agree. Um, and I know you're probably like, wait, I'm, but but rock with me. So when you when you understand your value, particularly your value as a woman, your value, whether it's um, in your body, your value, whether it is as it relates to being in relationships, your value as a an entrepreneur, a value as an employee, a value as a wife, a mom, a daughter to yourself a friend, when you understand that value, then think about this. Things that are high in value require a certain level of maintenance that things that are lower in value don't require. You know, I I often use the example of like luxury cars and the maintenance on a Bentley or a Tesla is going to be higher, at least in cost, because the value of the car is higher in value but the features of those cars are also higher than value than let's say a lower end car and so think about it your maintenance in your apartment you don't really have to do it they don't necessarily do all the things that you want them to do whereas you know a maintenance contract in your home is a little bit more robust but you're going to have to pay more but you're going to keep it at a certain level. And so I was thinking about this as it relates to ourselves. And I was having this conversation with my friend, particularly for those of us who are single or under dating. And I was recently watching um, some strawberry letters from life coach Sean. And, and basically um, in some of her videos, she she basically is telling women like, don't let these men lazy date you. That's my interpretation of it. And so um, and I think about my own experiences where people didn't want to put forth effort and um whether it was to work with me whether it's to um get the results they want in their life i think about people who want to be my client but they don't want to do the work like they weren't qualified and i think when we say we don't want to be high maintenance or people say they don't want to be with a high maintenance person is they're really saying they don't want to be with a person that requires effort and i require effort um, if you if you're going to be in my life, if you're going to be related to me, if you're going to be my friend, if if you're going to date me, if you're going to work with me, it requires some effort because I'm also putting effort into myself and I'm also putting effort into all of those relationships and in all of those roles and, and, and in my own personal development and we are all inherently worthy. Let me make that clear. But some of us choose to increase our property value by constantly improving. That requires effort if you want access to that. And so I I am not a fan 
of this notion that you need to be low maintenance because what that's really when someone says I want somebody that's low maintenance what they're really saying is I want somebody that I don't really have to put a whole lot of effort in to get what I want and absolutely not where they do that at absolutely freaking not and so I have a really really good friend an accountability partner um, named Yaya Smith phenomenal woman wise behind her years and she talks to women about um feminine success basically how to how to harness the power of femininity in multiple areas of their lives and i think about this right like when you understand that power when you understand um that you are the favor factor i think ashley empowers like i'm just naming all my faves that ashley empowers um or ashley brown but she goes on social media as ashley empowers did a webinar maybe about a year ago called the favor factor like biblically women are the favor like it says in the bible he that finds a wife finds a good thing a we're a good thing and obtains favor from the lord that means i'm the favor factor Okay, and so I think about, you know, Life Coach Sean, a.k.a. Bronze. She will always be Bronze Goddess to me. I think about Yaya Smith. I think about Ashley Brown, a.k.a. Ashley Empowers. And when, not just in relationships, but in your life. Like, do you really want to be in situations where people don't want to put in effort? And I, I was like, no, I don't want clients who want to sit back and don't do the work. I don't want friends who don't want to do the work of cultivating a friendship. I don't want to be in a romantic relationship with someone who doesn't want to do the work um, because I'm doing the work. I will continue to do the work and I will do the work in, in those places when it's uncomfortable, when it's difficult and when it's inconvenient, um, not just when it's fun and pleasurable and convenient because that's not life. I'm all the way on a whole other tangent. Anyway, as you can see, I'm hype about it. And so I really just want to dispel this this notion that you need in order to be easy to get along with, in order to be easy to live with, in order to be easy in relationship with, whether it's sisters or family or friends, that you have to be low maintenance, that um, I don't even want to be low maintenance with myself. I want to put effort in my health. I want to put effort in the way that I look like. Listen, and I'm not I'm not saying that it's a one size fits all that you have to wear eyelashes and fake nails and pounds of makeup um, to look like you put forth effort. But I also don't want you to look like you tired all the time and you just rolled out of bed. You know what I'm saying? And people people, some people say, you know, they like the authenticity of that when people are like on social media and they're and they're looking like they just rolled out of bed. And I'm like, no, they look like they don't, they don't put forth no effort. That's what they look like to me. It's and it, even if you're bare faced, like, are you taking effort to take care of your skin, to take care of your body? You know, people don't even want to cook for themselves anymore because it's inconvenient. It's like you don't want to put no effort in treating yourself well and nourishing your own body. Like, where they do that at? Like, I think. I mean, this is a very controversial opinion in my in my personal opinion that that I have, but I'm just I, it is what it is. Like. I think about it like this. Everybody wants to put in a, they want maximum return from minimal effort, whether that's what they're willing to invest in themselves, in their business. And I'm not just talking about financially. I'm talking about energetically wise, discipline wise, sacrifice wise. I put effort into myself. I spend the money to take vitamins. I spend the money to go to the gym. I spend the money I invest to take care of my skin and to develop my mind. I spend money in in taking courses. I take the time to read my Bible, to go to church, to be in life group, to fast, to pray, to meditate. I take the time to learn about interpersonal relationships. I take the time and the money to buy books and go to counseling and do different things like that. Like that's all effort. Baby, that ain't low maintenance. And so... It's interesting because I do think some people want you to put a lot of effort into you for their benefit, but then they don't want to put in any effort, investment, or sacrifice to reap the benefits of your self-investment, right? And so 
Um, it's kind of like bronze guys. Um, I'm, I'm Sean. I'm sorry. I got to get used. It's some like I followed her for years. I know her name is Sean. I need to call her life coach Sean. But like she was, you know, telling these women like these men who were like who want you to pay half and who want you to go half on everything and whatever is like you don't really want to put forth any effort. And it, it's not about being a gold digger. It's not about charging the highest prices. You know, people who work with me, it's an investment to be in my programs is an investment because one, I know how much I've spent time wise, which is my most precious commodity financial wise, um, sacrifice wise to know what I know to be able to do what I do. I, I've sacrificed time, money, sleep, you know, comfort, convenience. I've sacrificed convenience. And when you really start to think about it and you think about the areas in your life that you have invested time, money, resources, inconvenience, uncomfortableness to be the kind of woman that you are, then you are not going to let anybody access your value cheaply or for free. Like I'm amazed and like this doesn't happen to me anymore because I think people people get it. Like when people used to be like, can you just like run down to me everything you did in your business? I'd be like, fam, I've had a business since I was 15 years old. I'm in my 30s. Like, yes, I can, but it's going to cost you. You know, um, fortunately, I haven't had the experience of like dating people who didn't want to put forth any effort because I think when people who understand their own value see your value, they know that it's going to require some effort. And it's not about being difficult or challenging or taxing. It is about requiring an exchange of value. Um, Tesla is not going to charge Pinto prices because Pinto has not invested in a Pinto what Tesla has invested in a Tesla period the end and so um I don't know why I just wanted to come on to talk about that because as, as we're talking about this curated versus collected don't let anybody tell you you need to be low maintenance um and I, it and not in the traditional sense and that or that high maintenance is bad things of high value require a high level of maintenance if you if you were to go to France and you would go to go to the Louvre and the artwork and the sculptures and the things in there, they are so high value. They take a lot of maintenance. You cannot flash your camera flash on the Mona Lisa. You can't even get close up on it. It's in glass. It's under security. That's a lot of maintenance, but it's a lot of value. So I think I said before in one of my self-care videos that when you understand your value to you, it will set the benchmark for your level of self-care. I have a good friend who um, recently got married. And because of what I'm about to share, I'm not going to say who she is. But um, she recently got married and she was telling me that her and her husband were um, in the process of wanting to invest in something significant. And so they were kind of talking about where they were going to, um, you know, um, allocate their funds. And one of the things that she told him was like, hey, listen, I'm willing to sacrifice over here and over here and over here. But some things are non-negotiables because that's what it takes to be me. Um, it was her base level of maintenance. And I, and I found that so admirable because I was like, absolutely like. It, it takes this at a minimum to be me. And so I can't go below that point. I can sacrifice temporarily over here and over there and over there. And so I think about whether it's in your business, at your job, in your relationships, with your family, but even more importantly with yourself. If you understand how valuable you are, you won't treat yourself like you're low maintenance and put in the least amount of effort. Um, whether that's working out, whether that's reading, whether that's learning, whether that's your spiritual development, whether that's cultivating the relationships in your life. When you understand how valuable something is, you treat it a little bit better. You know, for those of you who let's talk about jewelry, for example, I I will throw my costume jewelry around because I know it's easily replaceable. Ooh, that is a word for somebody. I will toss it around. I will leave it any kind of way. I really won't keep up with it. It's whatever. 
my real jewelry is in velvet jewelry boxes and it's stored in places where they can be safe and they require a certain level of maintenance they need to be cleaned with certain chemicals on so often to keep them in pristine condition whereas my costume jewelry girl i will drop this and buy a new pair in a second so anyway i don't know <laughs> i don't know how i got on that but i did and so um that's it so I think I'm going to continue talking about curated versus collected, um, but I think I'm going to go. I'm going to revisit a series that I did years ago called "Find Your Flavor" because I'm basically saying the same thing. And so um, I think also my oh my good friend Patricia of God's Design is going to be doing a series on um, curating her life because she watched the video she enjoyed it and so make sure you check her out and I'll, I'll try to mention I mean I'll try to list all the women that I mentioned their social medias or if they have YouTube channels or Instagram oh, well they all have Instagrams um, in the description of this video because be a high maintenance woman and and be unapologetic about it and don't let people who want to be low maintenance in their own life make you feel like there's something wrong with you because you don't want to be low maintenance in yours so that's it uh, i'm back with a passion i actually recorded a couple of other videos actually in january um that i may still put up but um i'm working on something for us because i, I have i have so much to say when it comes to curating versus collecting your life in so many different areas and um some things that need a space that YouTube can't handle. So I'm thinking about creating um, an accountability community. It ain't going to be free because value um, where those of us who are serious about really cultivating and curating our life in multiple areas and who want to continuously do that work because we understand that as high value women, um, we require a high level of maintenance and we require a community of women who, who think the same. And that's an ongoing process. It's not a destination. Um, I'm thinking about creating it. Well, I'm not thinking about it. I'm creating a space for us to dive deep and a space where I can really go all in and bring in people who um, are experts at different in different areas. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. And uh, yeah, y'all, it's like, it's basically spring in Dallas because like the temperature just crossed over one day and here we are. So um, happy new year because this is my first video of the year and uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace.